What's going on? So in today's video, we're gonna be discussing whether or not basketball players should be using protein powder, and if so, what protein powder should they be using? So without any further ado, let's get into the video. What's going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. My name is Tommy Clark. I'm a certified nutrition coach. And today we're going to be answering the question, should basketball players take protein powder? And this is a really common question I get often along the lines of, should I take it to gain muscle? Uh, is this going to help me? Which one should I take? And I just really wanted to put this video together just to answer the question, give you a definitive resource and answer for should you take it? And also how should you go about choosing which protein powder you take? because uh, there's going to be some very important things that we want to consider. So definitely be sure to hang around to the end of the video. And at the end, I'll share with you the protein powder that I'm actually using um, and a couple of different protein powders that I recommend to the athletes that I work with. And then as always, if you enjoy the video, drop a like, subscribe. There's new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday with nutrition tips to help you take your performance on the basketball court to that next level. So if you haven't already, would highly recommend subscribing. And if you have subscribed, I appreciate you. And definitely be sure to share this channel with a friend, a parent, a coach, anyone who you think would benefit from this sort of video. And then now to answer the question, should basketball players take protein powder? The short answer is it depends. And that's often a cop-out answer that you'll hear me say a lot because almost everything in nutrition depends on context, on what the situation is, on who I'm talking to. Really, if anyone else tells you otherwise, run in the opposite direction because it always depends. But in general, protein powder is totally fine. Uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. You just have to pick the right one and use it responsibly. Now, when I say protein powder is fine, that doesn't necessarily mean to go and use three, four or five servings a day and not get any protein from other whole food sources like meats, poultry, seafood, plant-based sources like tempeh, tofu, things like that. You wanna get most of your protein from whole foods and that should be the number one priority in a situation where you can get all of your protein from whole foods, go for it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But what I see as a, uh, as a coach in my practice is athletes constantly under consuming protein. And it's not really as much of an issue as the under consumption of carbs. And there's actually some research to back this up in soccer players. Most of them actually consumed a pretty decent amount of protein. It was the carbs where they lacked. But nonetheless, as you start to get into nutrition, what you'll find is you probably are under consuming protein to some degree. So that's where protein powder can be very helpful because especially as a bigger guy, as a basketball player, I'm about 200, 205 pounds. And based on protein recommendations, I should be trying to consume anywhere from 160 to, to 240 grams of protein. And for me personally, that's difficult to hit without any sort of supplementation. And that's really the main utility for protein powder is in situations where it helps kind of give you that last little bump. So it's not making up the majority of my protein intake. Like I'm getting 150 grams of protein from whole food sources. I'm just kind of getting that last little bump. I'm, I think I'm eating about 185 right now. So I'm getting that last little bump of like 35, 40 grams of protein from protein powder. And that puts me in a position where I'm consistently hitting my numbers day in and day out. And it just makes things easier because I don't have to prep it. I can toss it into a smoothie. It also makes it easier to get a bunch of other fruits and vegetables in because I can toss the protein powder into my smoothie without any extra effort and make it a really healthy smoothie rather than just a sugar bomb that you get from Jamba Juice or wherever. But that's typically how I use it. And if you use it like that, it's kind of like that last little boost, it's totally fine. If you're relying on it all day to hit your protein intake and not getting anything from other natural sources, then that's where we're gonna kind of run into issues. And it's not even because protein powder is bad per se, it's because you're gonna be missing out on other nutrients that you're not gonna be getting from the whole food sources like meats and stuff like that. So ideally get most of your protein from whole food sources and kind of supplement that last little bit that you need to hit your goal with the protein powder. Now, as far as different types of protein powder, there's whey proteins like whey isolate, whey concentrate, whey hydrolysate, and there's also plant-based proteins. And typically the best plant-based proteins you're gonna find are gonna be some sort of blend because what do we know about plant-based proteins? Typically they lack the full essential amino acid profile. So if they're missing out on these essential amino acids, they're not gonna be optimal for muscle growth and promoting recovery and promoting muscle protein synthesis and all those things that we want as an athlete. So what companies have done is they'll blend certain proteins like take pea protein and brown rice protein blend them together and they kind of make this what's known as vegan whey. 
Um, there have been studies that have shown that whey protein tends to be more effective, uh, even uh, when compared to a plant-based blend. But nonetheless, plant-based proteins can get the job done if you don't tolerate whey, if you have an issue with dairy, if the whey protein itself causes digestive issues like bloating and gas and doesn't make you feel good. Don't feel the need to force it, even though it is technically optimal. If it doesn't make you feel good, go with the other option. I personally use plant-based. I have a sensitive stomach. That's just how... That's just the cards I was dealt. So I go um, with a plant-based protein powder just because it makes me personally feel better. Now, if you tolerate whey and it's totally fine with you and you don't have issues with it, go with whey. It's been proven to be more effective. If you don't tolerate it, go with the other option. There's no real wrong answer here. It's not, none of this is gonna make or break anything, but just kind of trying to give you as many of the facts as possible to make the best decision possible. Now, if you go with whey, there's different types of whey. Like I was saying, there's whey concentrate, there's whey, there's whey isolate, and there's whey hydrolysate. Technically, I think the best quality one is whey hydrolysate, but that one's absurdly expensive. So if we're talking between concentrate and isolate, I would recommend going with isolate because it has less lactose, and um, some people that are lactose intolerant can even tolerate it. It has less lactose, it has less carbohydrates, so you're getting mostly protein in that protein powder, and that way you can get your carbs from other sources, like whatever you want to put in your shake and the concentrate versions are typically cheaper and a little bit less high quality or a little bit lower quality so i'd recommend if you're going to go with whey protein go with the whey isolate that's your best bet it's a little bit more expensive but you get what you pay for and then i'll link the protein powders that i recommend and stuff like that in the description down below and at the end of the video i'll just name them off so that way you have some options to choose from but really the most important thing for athletes to consider when picking a protein powder is is it third-party tested? Is it NSF certified? What you want to look for when picking a protein powder is it, that it's NSF certified for sport. You'll know this because it'll have a blue little circle on it with the letters NSF in the circle. And that way you know what the NSF certification essentially means is that what's on the label is in the product because the FDA doesn't regulate supplements and protein powder falls under the category of supplement. So technically companies can say one thing is in there and something completely different could end up being in the supplement. And usually this just results in a poor quality supplement filled with fillers and stuff like that. But every once in a while, there'd be like a banned substance or something of that nature in there. And the last thing you want is to work super hard, get to the college level or the professional level, get some random drug test and end up getting popped for a banned substance that you had no idea that you took. So to avoid that, just make sure you're getting a product from a company that gets their stuff third-party tested, that goes the extra mile and does that even though they don't have to. That's usually a really good sign. Now there are there are other um, third-party tests that companies can undergo, um, but NSF is the gold standard. So if you get something that's NSF certified, you're good. So I would just make sure you're looking for that stuff. And then in terms of how much you should take, uh, I'd recommend anywhere between one to two servings of protein powder per day, you're fine. If you really need to, just as you're getting started to get your protein, protein intake up to go higher than that, you can. But I'd recommend keeping it to one to two servings just to make sure again that you're getting most of your protein from whole food sources. And that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe for new videos every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And what I want you to do going away from this video is let me know in the comments below, do you take protein powder? How much do you take? What's your go-to brand? Um, and then at the end, I know I said I would tell you what protein powder I use. Right now, I'm currently using the Garden of Life plant-based sport protein. Uh, again, my stomach's pretty sensitive, so I go with the plant-based version. By no means am I vegan, um, but I go with the plant-based version because it makes me feel better, and uh, I don't really tolerate whey that well, so that's the one I go with. If I were to pick a whey protein for you to go with, I think Garden of Life also has a whey protein that's NSF certified. Live Momentous is another really good brand that I've heard great things about. Haven't actually tried it because it's... It, insanely expensive and again whey just doesn't sit well with me personally but legion athletics has a good whey protein i don't think they're nsf certified though which is unfortunate i would trust them but again just to be on the safe side i would go with something that is nsf certified so those are my recommendations in terms of protein powder i'll drop some other brands in the description down below so you can check those out and then as always if you enjoy the video like i said drop a like subscribe all that good stuff would really mean a lot to me if you support the channel and if you haven't already, check out the free ebook that's down below. It's like 40 pages, goes through the four most common mistakes I see athletes make with their nutrition. And it'll just make sure you're going in the right direction. So if you haven't already, check that out. And if you have, again, share it with a friend. 
And as always, really appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I will see you for the next video on Saturday.